as me. I just kind of watch it. So you watch it as a as a consumer, as a, as, a, as an audience member yeah, like us. Yeah. Do you look at the Do you look at the choreography? Do you look at the the the, the spotting? Do you say, Oh my God, they didn't hit that no. the eight count that I had? <laughs> Not anymore. I did that way back. You did that way back. Way back. <laughs> that was then. Now it is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Great. So tell me this, the life of a choreographer, I'm, I'm so glad you're here because I never get to talk to choreographers. It's so great. Okay. So the question is, <laughs> the question is, uh, number, let's start with the first one. When do you come on, when did you come on to this project? Oh, very, very early, because don't forget I had done the show. Right. And the show started way well off Broadway. And we didn't do very well then there. And there was an off-Broadway actor's strike. So they had a choice to make. Either close or move on to Broadway, which they decided to do, and we became a hit. I don't know why. Yeah, well, it's definitely talks about, you know, high school angst and all those kinds of well, things I that we all Well, I think it's the relationships. I keep saying the same thing mm -hmm. over and over, but I know that's what it's about. It's the relationships between the kids. And we all went to school with all those types. Mm -hmm. It's very honestly written, and that's what it's about. And all the reason events in the world would be nothing if that blanket weren't there to sit on. Mm -hmm. So tell me this, as a, as a choreographer and, and a dancer, how, um, what do you do first? Uh, do you read the script, and do you hear the music? When do you, when, what do you do first? It, it depends on the project. It depends on when they bring it in. I was in very early degree, so um, of course I read the script. And I'm thinking about the show first, because that's when it all happened. And uh, I was just there right after it was written. Now, do you create for, I mean, because you're moving it from the stage to the film, um, Talk to you about moving it from the stage to the film. Oh, was that, was that well, an easy because, process, or, or well, it's just different because the stage is proscenium. You're looking right at it, like I'm looking at you guys. And film is 360 degrees or 180, and so you have to cover it from all sides. So you what see back, see if you're front, front, you see middle, you see high, you see low. There are shots there up, there are shots of feet. You get a chance. Lighting tells you where to look on the stage or can focus, but uh, the film you choose, and that's how it's edited and put together. So what happens first? So do you, do you choreograph the principles, or do you do the background? Where, where, how do you approach it? You choreograph for the background first, and then, and then oh, no, get to no, the no, principles, no, no, no. or do you, do you have the whole vision? You have to tell the story, but you know what everybody's doing, because you and the director and the cinematographer have planned it. I don't storyboard, I don't make pictures, but I know what I want to see, and I, I think I know what everybody else wants to see. So that, like, at the prom, there were huge shots of everybody, and then we went around and got what we needed, and I tried to do it in such a way that it wasn't too people of cuts, but the people danced towards you and told their stories like doing a stroll and all that. Yeah, I mean, you need to tell the story. Tell the story, yeah, of, of these Otherwise, of these it kids. doesn't matter. No. Right, right. So, you had the, the prom number and then this last number at the carnival. Was there, it, was there a production number that presented specific challenges that you had to overcome? Or, or because you had done the musical, you really knew what was happening at any Oh, I know how to tell a story. Before. The, I loved doing the carnival. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And we were tying up the whole story, and I made a curtain call for all the dancers. As you can see, I gave them a whole instrumental section dancing toward us, so you could see them all and see their relationships to each other and how they loved each other and blah, blah, blah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. It gets very, very emotional at the end, especially the seniors and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what about the, the, the cast? Were there, were there people who, uh, were there professional dancers? Or, and you, know, you had the actors. Were the actors also singers and dancers too? Or was it hard to get them? What was that train like? That, you know, 
rehearsing them and getting them with the well, dance. Well, we had three weeks almost a month of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And if you go through the cast, um, I mean, John is such a natural mover. Oh my God. Yeah, he really is. You don't have to do much there. <laughs> and, um, Olivia moved very well. And uh, the rest, they all move well. Yeah. We do it in character. Yeah. Well, my favorite, like I said, is Cha Cha. She's still <laughs> really terrific. And that Charles is just so terrific in that promise. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, in this show, Cha Cha was a big fat girl. <laughs> oh, big fat girl. You know? I wanted that in the movie, but they didn't, they didn't want to do it. I mean, it was a reality. They had, he didn't have his right partner, and he had the, she was the only choice. And then at the very end in the show, which I love too, which we did do in the movie, because we didn't have a big fat cha-cha. <laughs> at home, and she's standing there alone with her trophy. So real and so good, and they, they wouldn't do it. Same <laughs> <laughs> why we had palm tree. Boy, did I hate the palm trees. <laughs> so it's an urban story, or it was an urban story. But I, you know, um, they had to make it more suburban. They wanted to make a movie that would sell. You know, greasers and kind of nasty kids in high school only sold a limited house. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, they had to change it to make it, yeah, more yeah. commercially appealing. Yeah, we had to kind of make it commercially yeah. acceptable. Yeah. Now, tell, tell us about you, Pat. I mean, you're from Inglewood, New Jersey. <laughs> no, I was born. You were born in Inglewood, New Jersey. I'm sorry. And then when did you start dancing? Very, very early in the local dancing schools, like everybody else. Were you inspired by anything in particular? Uh, no. that said, I just want to move? You wanted to move also? No, they sent me to dancing school, and I liked it. I did like everybody else, you know. The tap, the interpreter, and the ballet. You did it all. We all did it all. <laughs> How do you make the, the transition from dancer to choreographer? That just kind of happened. It was nothing I really wanted to do. And um, it just kind of happened. I, heard, I think it began to happen when they wanted me to play, was it the little man Charlie Brown was Lucy. I wanted to play Lucy, and they said, no, you got to play Patty. Because I wasn't Lucy. You know? so I got very angry and said, OK, well, I would do that and understudy Lucy and assist the director, which I did. It was a very talented guy who's still very much around named Joe Hardy. And so I assisted Joe, and I staged the musical numbers. And I also went on now and then lost my voice totally, because I can't sing worth a day. <laughs> and, um, but I remember being backstage and realizing that I liked the applause for what I had done on the stage as much as I liked it for me um, as a performer, because I was a, a good dancer performer. And uh, that kind of started. And after that came a show, oh, I got a bigger show and I got fired, because it was just too much of a kind of chorus line dance show. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I did know, but I didn't do it very well. And that appeared in the paper or in some trade paper. And next thing I knew, I called for a show called Me Nobody Knows. And it was about ghetto kids. This was years ago. And it was the first time people spoke to the audience. And it was about these ghetto kids. And I really related to all that. And I staged it well. And that began. I think that's what got me greased. And once I had done Greece, I realized I like doing that, and that was the beginning then. <laughs> How big is your team? Do you, do you have a big team that you work with when you're... I don't have a team. You don't have a team. It's just you. Well, no, you have an assistant, you know. I mean, there is somebody, keep, I mean, I have two or three that I reach out for, depending on, but I only you know, use one, really, uh, depending on the job. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for a movie like... We used to have a couple people. Yeah. Right. Now, are they are they choreographing also, or are they no. really just taking your direction? This is what I want here. And, and, and no, no, no. I'm, I'm doing it. And then what I did with the movie was interesting. I had dancers D1 through 20, 10, 
10 women, 10 men, 10 girls, 10 boys. And they were kind of responsible for helping me keep the big scenes in line, especially in the carnival. If you notice, people kept appearing from different places, and they'd be 30 here, 30 there, and D1 D one and 2 were in charge of that group, D3 and 4 in charge of that group. And uh, it worked out that way. Yeah, to keep them in timing, is what you're saying. Well, yeah. get, get them going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rehearsing with me. Uh -huh. you know, they had sort of a little bit of room to do what they wanted to do, mm -hmm. character-wise. Um, I'm going to open it up to the audience to see if they have any other uh, questions for you. Um, Greece or anything else in Pat's career? Anyone out there? What did I say? I had, oh, I had, was, was, was Greece your first movie that you choreographed? Yeah. It was. And was Greece 2 your first movie you directed? Yes. Yeah. yeah, talk to us about how you. Uh, the question was, was Greece your first film? And she said yes. And was Greece 2 the first directorial movie? Yes. How did, you, how did, how did Greece 2 come to you? They asked me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> love, love it, by the way. Love Greece, too. I've totally forgotten. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Michelle, I remember on top of the ladder. I love and it. And I think the opening of Greece, too, was one of the better things Fabulous. I've ever done. Yes. That sort of long opening. <laughs> now, tell me this. I mean, Randall Kleiser. Yes. Randall Kleiser is the director of Greece. Um, tell us about him. I, I you know, I, I we looked at his career. I've seen some things in his career. What was it? Because was that was his debut as well. So working no, with he had done he had done a movie with John. That's how he got. Were you done a movie with John Travolta before? Yes, about a boy in a bubble or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, about a boy in a bubble. Boy yeah, in the boy in the bubble. Boy in the plastic bubble. That was television, though. Am I? Am I correct? No, I think so. No, I think it was film. That was film. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And so John Warner, John was beginning to get known when he wanted. And uh, because I'd done the show successfully and was known for the show, they asked me to do the And Randall and I really worked together very well. He's very, very visual. Very. Like the whole Thunder Road thing was, that's Randall's. Uh, that was great. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions out there? I have a question. Yeah. yeah. So a few years ago, they restaged How Princes Candide, and when I went to go and see it, I recognized that you had done the choreography for Candide from Greece, and I was just wondering how it was working with How Prince. That was uh, uh, working with How Prince well, and Candide. Well, How, that was not the first thing I did with How. How saw Greece, and i have known him, i have met him, because having been in West Side Story, which he ended up being partially producing. And um, we worked very, we just worked very well together. He, uh, he leaves me alone, he knows what he wants. But what was your question in so I think I missed it. How it was working with Hal Prince when you were doing Candide? Um, well, we had done a little night music together. Mm -hmm. You did the car for a little night music? came out of that. And then the candy came after that. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you do the choreography for uh, Little Night Music? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was that? I'll get it. Which which number in Greece was your favorite to choreograph? And the second question, which one was the most challenging? Um, no, which one were you most pleased with? Oh, which one were you most pleased with? I think the whole carnival. And we go together and before that, yeah. the one I want, all that stuff. I, I think that was my favorite and what I think what I did the best. I think Summer Nights is pretty damn well done, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wonder why there isn't like some kind of like special award or some kind of special uh, recognition at the Oscars for for choreography because yeah, they, they just never done it. Yeah, they never they just don't. I don't know why. I think it's because there aren't that many movies with choreography. Mm -hmm. So if there are only three, no, three or four. Uh, it's hard to do. 
there's that much competition in that field. There, there is a lot, but not recognized. And we're already giving out over 20 awards in one night. Yeah. So that just makes you know, the show. But still, that's, yeah. that choreography is just really terrific. And it's such an important storytelling. It's part of the storytelling it is. process. It should be. It's, it yeah, depends. It's story as well. I mean, there's uh, there show off numbers. I always divide numbers into three things there's paramount, which are the show off numbers, and they're just the, the big numbers. And then there's semi paramount, which in a way, Reese Lightning was that. It's a sort of storytelling into a bit of show off and then back again. And then there's the in text number. There are worse things I can do. So that you have three stages of show off. <laughs> um, any other advice? Oh, all the way in the back. Yes. Two quick questions, please. Yes. What is of ignorance when you do choreography? Do you put the moves what? down on paper? Oh, okay, hold on. When, you, when you're doing choreography, are you putting, writing the moves down on paper? Well, you said you don't know, storyboard, so is, is there, is there a, a no, you writing part? You film it. You should, not these days. We used to make notes, and then pray for the best. There was something called dance notation that I tried to learn, and it was horrible. <laughs> okay, and then you had a second one. I'll, I'll give you. Yes. Are you still in? Are you still in touch with the yeah. cast? Yeah, a lot of them. Olivia, John, mm -hmm. sure. That amount of men, she was somewhere weird. See how it was on she went to. Yeah, eighty five, sure. Yeah. You know what's so great about this also is just looking at all those um, um, actors, Sid, Sid Caesar and Dilly Goodman. Sid Caesar is a genius. Yes. Yeah. Totally genius. Yeah. Yeah. Total genius. And Dodie Goodman is just one of the funniest um, actresses. Uh, Same uh, thing, that they have a comic genius. Yeah, and Eve Arden. And Eve Arden, oh my God, what timing that woman had. Love seeing oh. them on screen. Love seeing them on screen. So let's go back. I'm going to do one more Oscar question. I would love for you to talk about uh, choreographing that opening number with Debbie Reynolds. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite thing to do. Mm. But I was sort of shoved into it by Alan Carr. I think he hmm. said, you've got to go do this. You've got to. Now, it's not what I do this, I kind of presentational number. And Gene Kelly was supposed to do it. And there was this big golden chair that I think they'd used before, but he was going to be in this golden chair that was up in the air flying over everything. And then he decided he didn't want to do it, so then he did it. She was great. I was just watching her and said, she moves very, very well. There was nothing wrong with it, except it was a sort of presentational kind of thing that I don't like to do. <laughs> that simple. And that was your first time uh, uh, choreographing for the Oscars? I think it was the only time. The only time. <laughs> I, I didn't want to do that kind of stuff. Other people do that kind of stuff much, much better than me. Line up some kick lines and all. <laughs> But you know, I'll, I'll, let me ask you this. Let me ask this question: Is it? Um, tell me what the difference is between doing something like a, a, a what you call presentational and a full musical. It's it's still live performing. Am I totally different? One is storytelling, and one is just kind of kicking. Well, it's not kicking. It's it's more abstract. Now, I'm better when I have something, I have a, a constructed story or a constructed move. It's going somewhere. I get lost doing just steps. Mm -hmm. so I just get lost. Mm -hmm. I'm no good. Yeah, so it is and always People lost. are very good at that. You know, give me a kick line, I'm pretty good for 64 counts, and then if I don't know why I'm doing it, it falls apart. <laughs> if it's part of the story, I'm great. I mean, when I did Boardwalk Empire, I had those chorus lines the whole time, but they were part of storytelling. And if they were dancing here, there was a story right there. It was all related. That's what that's where I live. I don't live in, you know, pretty presentational stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't brought up I was brought up in Martha Graham's company for Christ's sake. So it's all about self and it was all about something else. Yeah. 
well, it's always about story, and I'm so glad you made that for distinction. Me, for yeah. me, it is. I just get lost in one or mood or something. Yeah, I'm so glad you made that distinction. Uh, any any other questions? I this young lady right here. Who are some of your favorite choreographers? Who are some of your favorite choreographers? <laughs> well, the Manelli choreography yeah, up to a point. I mean, <laughs> obviously, I danced some of the revivals of Agnes the Bell stuff. You can't top that. I like to the Park stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. You said that. John and Olivia obviously had incredible movement. But I'm curious, how was their chemistry? And was that something that you really had to enforce, or did you feel that that was very organic? What? Uh, 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 you said that John and Olivia moved very well. Oh, yeah. But how was their chemistry? Did you have to work with Excellent. them on chemistry? No. It was very good. And they're good actors. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't there, nobody knew it. <laughs> no, they, they, they were great. They got along. It's a great line. Any others? I see one right here on the end. Yes. How did you transition from choreographer to director? How did you transition from choreographer to director? It just sort of happens. <laughs> uh, uh, it, sometimes, and here's my feeling about it. Sometimes one should just choreograph. As a choreographer director, I mean, directors don't necessarily choreograph. I think sometimes it's possible to do both jobs, and sometimes it's not, and it's better, you're much better off with two people. Because mm -hmm. what begins to happen while they've been doing both jobs, sometimes it's been fine, and sometimes I'll find out that the book isn't working as well as it should. Since that's not where I came from first, I concentrate very hard on that. And then I look at the choreography that I'm doing, and it's kind of mediocre, and I gotta go back and redo. So if everything's fine, you can do both. If it's not, you gotta be very careful, and you need two people. Mm -hmm. And very often, two people are better than one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Uh, I think a well, good deal of the time. Yeah. Do you is is there is there one thing you I don't want to say uh, like better, but uh, are you fulfilled equally directing and chore and, and choreographing, or does one one feed you different? Does it just I'm not so good. Enough? Well, I don't think I like doing both or choreographing. I don't like directing and having somebody else do the dances because I won't leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's where I live, and I'll probably get in the way. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to make this the last question, and I, I, I wanted to ask it also. I just remembered to ask it. How, uh, what, is that, what is the relationship between the choreographer and the director? Does the director leave you alone, or are you in close collaboration every day, every shot, every movement? Can they say, Pat, I didn't like that so much? Oh, of course they can say that. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, it's, it's very collaborative, but not every shot or every move by any means. You discuss it first. Uh, everybody's relationships are different. Mm -hmm. you know, I know what I'm doing, so they kind of leave me alone. Or it's not that they leave me alone. We collaborate. I go up and do it. I show it to you before we ever shoot it. If you don't like something, we say, well, why don't you like it? What do you feel it's not doing? I mean, the best thing I ever, while well, I was, I did some stuff with the Boston Opera Company, and they had a great director named Sarah Caldwell. And people didn't like her much. She was very dumb. And I remember one opera I was doing for her early on. And I did. And I said, okay. And she said, Four words I've never forgotten, and they're my mantra. I don't get it, said she. <laughs> if you don't get it, it doesn't matter. You know, it has to, it has to come across. That's the big thing. Yeah. Connecting with you. Connecting with you. Yeah.